Welcome back to another Math for Game Developers, except that uh, we're doing something a little new today. We're not actually doing Math for Game Developers, we're doing Code for Game Developers. It's a new sub-series that I'm going to do where we're not co concentrating on math so much, but on computer science problems. Although it's really not going to be that much different, because computer science really is just a branch of mathematics, computational and discrete mathematics, and instead of computations we're going to be focusing on algorithms how to how to design algorithms and data structures that are fast and so here's the first problem we're going to solve if you've been paying attention you'll have seen that we store all of our characters as global variables global variables and that makes them pretty much impossible to remove or add while the game is still running you'll see that these are the uh, these are the the monsters that we created and these four are the boxes and this is the player character up here and they were all just global variables and we want to uh, we want to be able to add and remove uh, characters as the game is running but that will give us a problem and I'll illustrate this problem over here let's say I have two monsters A and B and they're both square monsters their buddies, their friend and friends, and so they want to know who is their buddy, and so they have pointers to each other, right? A has a pointer to B, and B has a pointer to A. So each of them knows who their buddy is. Now let's say one of these gets killed by the player and dies. Now when B tries to follow his pointer to A, he's going to walk off a cliff because there's nothing there. He's going to maybe encounter some junk memory and, and it'll crash. The game will crash, which is bad. And so we not only need a way to add and remove entities, but we need to be able to keep track of which entities are gone and not crash. So let's take a look at how we do that. We're going to use something called an entity list, which is uh, maybe a bad name because an entity list is actually stored in an array. And so I'm going to draw this array over here on the right. So you can see kind of how it works. It's, it really is just a list of, of stuff where each entry in the array is associated with a number. So this is 0. Remember, we start counting at 0 when we do programming. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And so when we add an, 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 an entity or a character to our list, we just look for a free spot in the list. And so when uh, B wants to know who his buddy is, instead of keeping track of a pointer to his buddy, instead of that he is going to keep track of what index in the list his buddy is. And I'll see if I can show you that. So we're going to pretend that A is in, let's say, slot number three. We'll put him right here. And B will put him in slot number seven, four, five, six, seven. So B will be here in slot number seven. And now when B wants to know who his buddy is, B knows that his buddy is in slot number three, and A knows his buddy is in slot number seven. Okay. So now if A dies, B knows his buddy was in slot number three, so he goes zero, one, two, three, sees that that slot is now empty and can do something different now that his buddy has died. So we've solved that problem. But now another problem is kind of introducing itself, and that is what if monster C gets created? Monster C is a circle monster, not a square monster. So B and C can't be friends because they're different. But since A is gone, B just happens to get placed in slot number three. So what happens now? B tries to figure out who his buddy is, and he knows his buddy is in slot number three, and he sees zero, one, two, three. The monster in slot number three is C. And so B thinks that C is his buddy because C is now in slot number three. And so we're gonna add one more piece of information, one more small piece of information to this. It's called a parity number. A parity number is just a random number that's given to every entity when they're born, when they're created. Okay, so we're going to give A the parity number 1, 2, 3, just given a random number. It doesn't matter as long as it's a 
unique random number, and we're going to give C three, two, one. And now when B remembers who his buddy is, he doesn't just remember that he's in slot three, but also he had the parity number one, two, three. And so when B goes to see who his buddy is, he knows he's in slot number three, and his parity number is one, two, three. And so he goes, let's see, slot three. The guy that's in slot three has parity number three, two, one. That doesn't match my own parity number. That doesn't match one, two, three. So C, monster C, cannot be my buddy. And so we've solved all of these problems. We've solved a lot of problems here. So let's go to the code and implement all this stuff. Now there's a good bit of code that we have to go over it. And I'm not gonna go over all of it because I, I, I encourage you to, to look at, again, the code is, is up on GitHub and you can look at the entire thing, see what changes I made to implement this whole system. But I'm just gonna go over the highlights here. First, I wanna show you uh, one of the benefits of putting everything in an array. If you remember when we did the intersection videos, we had to call this intersection function for every entity we had. And so it was kind of ugly. This whole piece of code was duplicated over and over and over and over for every entity, uh, for every global entity. But now we have them in a list. So we just grab, we, we have this for loop that loops from the first entity on up and we grab our entity. We, if we don't exist, if it doesn't exist, we ignore it. Or if it's just like an environment box or something, we ignore it. And then we call our function. And here there's no duplicated code. Our, our intersection uh, function only exists once in the code base. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and show you how we create, create characters, okay? There's a really quick method that we use to find an empty spot in the list. We create the new character. We give it a parity number. In this case, I just I start at zero and I increase it every time I create a parity number. So it's always a unique number. We always need a unique number. And then I tell it what its index is in the list. And then to remove a character, it's pretty similar. I just find where it is in the list and then I delete it and set where it was to null so that we can tell that there's nothing at that point in the list anymore. And if you don't understand this, then my suggestion is to fire up the Visual Studio debugger and step through this code with the F5, F10, and F11 commands and see what it does. It'll be a real eye-opening experience. Let's go over here real quick and we'll see what I've done. Uh, this is in the method that when the character takes damage, it removes it removes health from him. Okay, so when we fire on an enemy, it's going to take damage, and then if the health dips below zero, then we kill this monster and we spawn a new monster at a random location. And so I've done this so that we can actually kill monsters. I've also made them also done some behind the scenes work so that they try they come slowly towards the player so they kind of attack the player. And then, of course, when its health dips below zero, we remove that monster from the game. And so I've only left one thing for us to implement here, and that is the function where we have our, we have our handle, uh, which has an index, the index of the monster that we're pointing at, and a parity number, and we have to determine whether or not this index uh, should return a monster or if that monster has been removed. So let's implement that function real quick. The first thing to do is if our index is equal to this not zero is a special value. It's a special value that we give our index when there when there's no monster for it. Okay, so if our index is the special value, then we return null. Now we're going to get whatever monster is at this point in the list. So let's get character index, mi index. What character is at that point in the list? If there's no character there, then we return null. And the one last check is, if whatever happens to be at that point in the list 
has a parity that's not the same as our parity, then we return null pointer. So that if that happens, that means the one that we were pointing at has been removed and replaced with another one. Now all of our conditions are happy and satisfied, so we'll return our character. And let's run it and see it work. Here we go. See, they're slowly moving towards me, and if I attack them three times, then they disappear, and oop, there's the next one that spawned. There we go. They, they're all, all the new ones that spawn are small ones. So, oh, there they all are. So, we're done here. Next time, we're going to look and see what happens when you try to add thousands of monsters to the list. How do we optimize that so we only have to render a few of them at a time? See you next time.